الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today inshallah ta'ala we're going to start the introduction to the science usul al-fiqh uh, sorry al-qawa'id al-fiqhiyah introduction to the science al-qawa'id al-fiqhiyah legal islamic maxims that's what we're going to study inshallah ta'ala introduction and the way that i plan to go through it is in these five so- five points in these five points inshallah ta'ala the first is ta'rifuha again we always do that right we define the science what does the science mean the way that when we were speaking about uh, usul al-fiqh remember we said usul al-fiqh is murakab it's a compounded word usul and al-fiqh right we said that correct this science is also compounded science. What do we mean by compounded? We mean al qawaid and al fiqiyah So what we first have to do is wal mufradul murak wal mufradul mudaf in tarakaba ma'ghiri hatta abtam malakaba fahadu yakunu bil ifradi li kulli wa'idi ladan nukadi thumma yu adu thaniyan murakaban idla kaba ladihimu tarakaba. We have to define each one separately. So I broke the definition into two. هي باعتبارها مركبا وصفيا individually what does قواعد mean and what does فقه mean I do that here what does القواعد mean and what does الفقهية mean the second definition I do is باعتبارها لقبا وعالما I talk about it together as a science what does القواعد الفقهية mean okay let's go to the first one which is each one separately Qawa'id is al-asas. Jam'u qa'idah, al-qa'idah. is the plural of qawa'id, is the plural of what? Qa'idah. Okay? It's the plural of uh, al-qa'idah. Wa hiya al-asas, and that's the foundation. Qa'idah is the foundation. It's the foundation. Lakin here, we mean al-qadiyya al-kulliya. Comprehensive maxims. Okay? We'll speak about that in more details, inshallah ta'ala. What does al-fiqiyah mean? Al-fiqiyah means attribution and an ascription to fiqh. That's why we equal al-fiqhiyah. Nisbah li'ilm al-fiqh. It's a science that is attributed to fiqh. Because the reason why we have to say al-qawa'id al-fiqiyah because there's al-qawa'id al-aqadiyah there's aqidah related principles we just need to say no no these are fiqh related principles does that make sense it's fiqh related it's fiqhiyah so it's attributed to the science of fiqh because there is al-qawa'id al-aqadiyah are we all together brothers al-qawa'id al-aqadiyah no this is not al-aqadiyah this is not aqidah it's attributed to and ascribed to principles for what? For fiqh. Here is the, what you really need to focus on. Here is what it really matters that you understand. What does qawaid al fiqhiyya mean according to the scholars of that science? What do they mean al qawaid al fiqhiyya We're going to cover each point, inshallah uh, ta'ala. So we're going to cover the word hukum. Kulli, we're going to take. Yuta'arrafu minhu, we're going to take. So that's one. That's two. That's three. Hukmul um, juz'iyat, we're going to learn what it means. al fiqhiyah which is four. Mubasharatan, which is five. Bi aksara min babin, which is six. Those six points you have to understand from the uh, ta'rif. Those six points we're going to take from... Al-Qawaid uh, al-Fiqiyah. You have to know all of those six points. Okay, does that make sense? 
Let's start the first one, which is hukum. Hukum means what, brothers? Some scholars, they don't use the word hukum here. Instead of hukum, they put the word qadiyah. Qadiyah or hukum here is synonyms, okay? Don't worry, it's the same. So sometimes it will say qadiyatun kulliyah. I'm a qadiyun kulliyun. Okay? And some will say, no, hukmun kulli. It's the synonym. It's the same. Okay? One can take the place of the other. What does a hukum mean? Hukum is something which is either affirmative or negative. You're either affirming something or you're negating something. That's hukum. So ruling. You're either affirming something um, or negating something. It's either of the two. Okay? For example, if you say, Fulanun sadiq, so and so is truthful. It's a hukum. You gave a ruling. You affirm something. What did you just do? You affirmed something. What did you affirm? You affirmed truthfulness for some a particular person. Okay? Kulliyun, what does it mean? Kulliyun means it is. Every single thing go falls under it. Qawa'id al fiqhiyah is comprehensive, meaning things go under it. There was an English term for it, I forgot it, I really forgot it. So, kulliyun it means all inclusive. I mean, that wasn't what I was thinking, but I had another word, but. So this is kulli, kulliyah, and this is aglabiyah. Aglabiyah. What does it mean here? Pay, pay attention to this. The scholars actually differ whether usul al-fiqh is all-inclusive, if it's kulliyah or if it's aglabiyah. What do I mean by that? Okay, take this from me. There are going to be exceptions in usul al-qawaid al-fiqiyah. There are going to be exceptions in qawaid al-fiqiyah. Some principles you're going to learn, and you're going to learn, this is not part of the qaida. Are we all together? This is not part of the principles. So some are arguing, why are you making it kulliyah, all-inclusive? Which is what we did here. We said kulliyun. When the qaida is mentioned, all of it falls under it. There's no exceptions. Another group said, no, there are exceptions. And you yourself know there are exceptions. So why are you calling it kulliya? We won't go into that for now. Are you with me, brothers? Bil quwa and bil fi'liya. We won't go into that right now. We will leave it for you to just remember that the correct opinion is that it is kulliya. And the reason why it didn't go under this in the first place is because it wasn't part of it anyways. It had nothing to do with it. You thought it was part of it. But really, Qawaid al fiqhiyah is kulliyah. It is all inclusive. Okay, so we learned what the word hukum means, right? And we also learned what? Kulli. Kulli means all inclusive. General. It's a general. It's all inclusive. We learned what it, what it means. Okay. Yuta'arrafu minhu. Yuta'arrafu minhu. What is the word yuta'arrafu minhu fees? First mean. Why didn't we just say يُعْرَفُ مِنْهُ? Why do we say يُتَعَرَّفُ? Why not يُعْرَفُ? What you guys all should know is that in the Arabic language كُلَّمَا كَثُرَ الْبِنَاء Every time the structure of the word becomes more كَثُرَةِ الْمَعْنَى غَالِبًا أما زيادة المبنى زيادة في, زيادة في المعنى غالباً. Every time the word structure becomes more the meaning becomes also more. In other words, يُعْرَفُ and يُتَعَرَّفُ يُتَعَرَّفُ is going to have a more bigger meaning. I'll give you an example. You all know this. This, this is an easy example. Seen and so far. Seen and so far. Hey, what are they? You all study in Arabic, right? You all know this, right? Seen and so far. What do they both show? 
future. Did they not? Doesn't the scene show the future? And does sofa not show the future? What's the difference? So, which one is a closer future? What if you want is a further future? Why? Because it has more letters. That's the principle here. The, not all the time, but the overwhelming majority of times, if the word becomes more, the meaning becomes also, it becomes more. So what does yuta'arrafu minhu? What does it mean? It means... Yu'arafu means you could just take the ruling from it straight away. Like yuta'arrafu minhu means badlu juhdi You have to exert effort. You have to think. You have to use your brain more. That's what yuta'arrafu minhu means. And that's what we want to use for al-qawaid al-fiqiyah. We don't want to say yu'arafu. Because if we say yu'arafu, everyone can just take it out. The ruling out of this. The ruling is taken out of thinking, using your brain, observing, analyzing. So, usul al fiqh, uh, sorry, qawaid al fiqhiyah, sorry. Al qawaid al fiqhiyah is hukmun kulli. It's a all inclusive ruling. You ta'arrafu minhu that you will extract after exerting effort and hard work, hukmul juz'iyat al fiqhiyah. What do you mean by hukm al juziyat al fiqhiyya? The sub branches of fiqh. You'll take it out of the sub branches of fiqh. So remember, mas'ala, another mas'ala, another mas'ala here, another mas'ala. All of those mas'ail, you take out of it what? Qa'ida usuliya. Qa'ida al fiqhiyya. Are we all together, brothers? Where does the qawaid al fiqhiyya come from, brothers? I'm going to show you later. Masadiruha, when I mention it, I mean, alaqatuha bil fiqh wa usul. Qawaid al usul fiqhiya comes from the furu', the sub branches. When you study sub branches, sub branches, sub branches. Whereas usul al fiqh comes first. When usul al fiqh is established, then the fiqh comes out of the usul al fiqh. And then the fiqh, qawaid al fiqhi comes out of it. And that's the order it is in. Are we all together? Am I making sense? The qawaid al usuliya am usul fiqh comes first, and then from the usul al fiqh comes out of, out of it comes what? Al furu' al fiqhiyya, the sub branches, which, that which you study in fiqh books. And then the qawaid al fiqhiyya comes out of that. So the qawaid al fiqhiyya is what? Hukm al juz'iyat, you take it from the furu'. Once you study a fiqh book, durr al bahiyya, you study minhaj al shafi'iyya, umdat al sariqa, al zad. All these furu', all these some branches that you're learning, you're Jews, layer Jews, this, 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 this. Qawaid al fiqhi comes out of that. Okay? Mubasharatan. Maqasid al sharia is within usul al fiqh. Sorry, qawaid al fiqhiyya. We're going to touch on that. Here it is. We mention it here. Tu'inu ala ma'rifati maqasid al sharia wa shmuliha. We're going to mention it here. Beautiful. The qa'id al fiqhiyya do you take the ruling from it straight away yes look at it here hukm kulli yuta'arrafu minhu hukm al juz'iyat al fiqhiyya mubasharatan mubashara means what directly you take it from it i give you an example a person said to me brother i prayed salah hey um i made wudu after i did wudu i came i prayed dhuhr asr came I don't know whether I broke my wudu. What shall I do, brother? And Asr is the karma is just going to go off now. What shall I do? I look at him. I, I can give him a qa'id of fiqiyah and he can take a ruling out of it straight away, which is al-yaqeenu la yazulu bi And I grab his hand and we go to the masjid together. With certainty, I'm a certainty cannot be removed with doubt. He doesn't look at me and say, hmm. What do you mean by that? He understands straight away and he will go and pray with me. Are we all together? Lakin qawa'id al usuliya am usul al fiqh, you can't do that. This is the issue of usul al fiqh. And this is what distinguishes usul al fiqh from qawa'id al fiqhiya. Which is what? Somebody comes up to you and says to you, brother, do I have to let my beard grow? Do I have to let my beard grow? And you say to him, yes. 
And then you look at him and you say to him, Al Amrul Mutlaq Yaqtadil Wujub. The unrestricted commandment it shows obligation. He's like, What commandment are you talking about? What obligation are you talking about? Then I have to extract from that qa'ida usuliya a furu' fiqiya. I have to give the example. I say, Did not the Prophet not say, um, Wafiru liha, let your beards grow? And he says, Yes. Wasn't that not a command? Yes. That command shows obligation. He didn't understand it when I gave him the qawaid usuliya. When I told him the usul fiqh principle, he didn't understand it straight away. Whereas the qawaid al fiqiya, straight away the person understands what I'm saying. Does that make sense? That's the difference between it. The qawaid usuliya, once you say it, you have to mention the furu' fiqiya. Just like what I did. I said, Al Amrul Mutlaq Yaqtadil Wujub. The unrestricted command shows obligation. He said, What are you talking about? I say, Now I have to mention the Farah Fiqi, the sub branch, which is what? Didn't the Prophet not say, Wafiru liha, urkhul liha, let the beard grow? And he goes, Yes. And I said, Does that not show obligation? He says, Yes, it does. Then that means you have to let your beard grow. Are we all together, brothers? So the Qawaid al Fiqiyah. The person takes, it, takes from it straight away, directly he takes from the Qawaid al fiqhiyah ruling. Whereas the Qawaid al usulia am usul al fiqh, no. No. You have to explain it. They won't be able to. Fi akthar min, fi akthar min babin. Qawaid al usulia it goes into more than one chapter. It, qawaid al fiqhiyah is not restricted to a particular chapter. Like for example, if we say, Al-Aslu fil aniyat al-Tahara The original essence of the utensils is that it's pure So if you see a cup somewhere You can't say, oh okay, I can't drink in this You can, the asal is that it's Tahara until you prove otherwise Are we all together? This is not called Qawaid al fiqhiyah Why is it not called the Qawaid al fiqhiyah Because it's restricted to the chapter of Aniya, The utensils, that's it You can't use it for other places that's called a dabit. That which is restricted to a particular chapter is called a dabit. What is it called? A dabit. I think I explained all six now. Let me go over it one more time. The first point that I said you need to know if you want to understand qawaid al fiqhiyah is that it's a hukum. Hukum means ma yahtamilu al aw al naf. Anything that can take affirmation or negation. Like for example, Fulanun Sadiq. So and so is truthful. That's a hukum. Again, I said, Kulli. Kulli means what? All inclusive. Usul al fiqh, sorry, Qawaid al fiqhiyah is all inclusive. Yuta'arrafu minhu. Yuta'arrafu minhu. We said we try to leave off saying, Yu'arrafu minhu. We don't want to say Yu'arrafu minhu. Why? Because yuta'arrafu has more letters. It has more letters. And it shows a meaning bigger than yu'rafu, which is what? You don't just understand from it directly, but rather you need to think over it. And you need to observe and analyze. What is it that you need to learn and analyze? Hukmul juz'iyat. The ruling regarding the masail. Remember, I just said right now, Al-Qawaid al fiqh where is it taken from? Mas'ala, 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 mas'ala. All mention. Fiqhiyah. Mubasharatan, straight. The ruling is taken from it, straight. Qawaid al fiqh can be used as evidence. A person can just push it forward to somebody. Fi akthara min babin, in more than one chapter. Fi akthara min babin. In more than one chapter, meaning Qawaid al fiqhiyah is not restricted to a particular chapter, it's for all chapters. Like Al Umuru bi Maqasidiha, acts are based on what was intended for it. That's a Qawaid al fiqhiyah. It enters everywhere. It enters nikah, it enters talaq, it enters uh, salah, it enters everything. Okay, alaqatuha bil fiqh wal usul. What's the relationship? Of al qawaid al fiqhiyah with fiqh and usul al fiqh. So, two things. What's his relation with fiqh and what is his relation with usul al fiqh? The relationship is the first thing that happens is al qawaid al usuliyah. 
بعد اصوليه كمز ذن كمز الفروع الفقهيه اند ذن كمز القواعد الفقهيه او يو تو جذر برذرز اذا ذا قواعد الفقهيه از استقراء الفروع قواعد الفقهيه از بيست ابون induction of what of the fiqh once a person studied fiqh 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 qawaid al fiqh comes from there it comes from it's brought from there it is it's brought from there um now we're going to take the third thing which is masadiruha what are its object uh, sorry what are its sources what is the sources in which it stands on what are the sources of qawaid al fiqhia adillatu sharia is the evidence from the quran and the sunnah we're looking at the quran we're looking at these are the furu' the sub branches the quran and the sunnah are looked at and the ruling is brought from there the second place it's brought from is istiqra al furu' we study fiqh books what do we study we study fiqh books we we'll study a fiqh book a particular fiqh book and uh, when we study that book qawaid come out from there the statements of those scholars we bring it from it keep that in mind now what i mentioned here is going to answer a question here which is hal al qawaid al fiqhia hujjatun yustanadu ilayha can qawaid al fiqhia actually be used as an evidence can it be used as an evidence? Can a person just say qa'ida and that's evidence? You have to take it. The answer for that is, is remembering this point. Okay? okay. And wa'uha, how many types of qa'id are there? There are t- two types. Qa'ida kulliya kubra. These are the supreme legal maxims, and there are five. Khamsun muqarraratun fil qa'id madhabit. فكن بهن خبير ضرر يزال وعادة قد حكمت وكذا المشقة تجري بالتيسير والشك لا ترفع به متيقنا صفي وأخلص إن كنت صفي لا فقط أنويس is five الأمور بمقاصدها الضرر يزال اليقين لا يزول بالشك العادة محكمة help me here Five. Those are the five legal maxims. They are called Qaida Kulliya Kubra. We're going to take them inshallah next week. And then there comes Qaida Kulliya Ghayra Kubra. They're supreme, they're big, but they're not these five. These five are agreed upon by all of the Imams Abu Hanifa, Al Imam Malik, Al Imam Shafi'i, and Al Imam Ahmed. They all agree on these five. And we'll touch on it, inshallah. We'll touch on it, inshallah ta'ala. Fawaidu dirasatiha. What are the benefits in studying qawaid al fiqhiyah? Why should I study it? Number one, dabdu al masail al fiqhiyah al mutanathirat fi salkin wahid. Remember, we said qawaid al fiqhiyah, where is it taken from? It's taken from the furu' al fiqhiyah. It's taken from istiqra' al furu'. You study the madhab. All of these madhabs, they have how many masail in it? 90,000 masail, 60,000 masail, 20,000 masail in here. How can I remember those 20,000? I can't remember it. So, maybe 1,000 of them might have one qa'ida you can remember it with. Does that make sense? So, it's dabtul masaili. It's been pre- having precision in the, ma- in the masail fi silkin wahid. In one, in one sentence. You take this one sentence, and a whole 30,000 masail, that's it, you've got it. I don't need to, rem- I don't need to remember each one of those 30,000. I have one qa'ida that suffices me from remembering it all. Does that make sense? Number two, is tasheel, tasheelu hifd al furu' It also makes it easy. What does it make easy? It makes it easy to memorize fiqh. Who can really sit down and memorize these book, fiqh, fiqh books that are volumes? How are you going to remember that all? But qawaid al fiqhiyah. That's a nice way of doing it. Faharis ala fahmika lil qawaidi jami'at al masail al shawaridi litartaqi fi al ilmi khayra murtaqa wa taqtafi subul al ladhi qad wufiqa wa had. You know, study this kitab. By studying this, many masail that all over, all together in one place. And 
the smart person knows that he's not going to live for all of his life. So memorize these stuff. It saves you having to always remember things. Number three is It helps you in understanding, of course, where scholars took things from. You learn where they took it from. Okay, now that you've learned the jurists where they took things from, if new things happen, IVF. IVF. Is it permissible? Is it not? What is the ruling regarding IVF? Organ transplant. What is the ruling regarding that? These are nawazil. These are mustajaddat. These are newly matters that require rulings. These are nawazil. What do I need to know? First of all, I need to know ma'arifatum akhid. I need to know where the scholars, what they did and how they extracted things. So when it comes to these contemporary issues that I have, I'll know how to deal with it. I'll give correct response to these classical issues. Last but not least, تُعِينُ عَلَى مَعْرِفَةِ مَقَاسِدِ الشَّرِيعَةِ Studying قواعد الفقيّة, it will make it easier for you to understand the objectives of the Sharia. قواعد الفقيّة directs you and shows you what was the objective of the Sharia. And then when you're given a verdict, when you're trying to deal with a contemporary issue, you will learn, you will know, I have to observe the maqasid of the Sharia in this issue. I need to know what is the objective of the Sharia in this particular issue. And subhanAllah, I, I mention these lines of poetry all the time, but it's by qawaid al fiqhiyah you learn our religion in every situation till the day of judgment. It has a ruling. But yes, our religion doesn't give a ruling to everything. A is this, and B is this, and C is this. No. The way it does it is by legal maxims, principles. Those are the principles it gave you. You can apply those principles until the day of judgment. You can. I'm going to conclude with the last point, inshallah ta'ala, which is, هل القواعد الفقية حجة يستند إليها؟ Is the قواعد الفقية a proof? Remember at the beginning I mentioned a brother comes up to you and says to you I had wudu for dhuhr I prayed dhuhr with wudu Asr has now come I'm doubtful whether I broke my wudu and I just said to him اليقين لا يزول بالشك أما اليقين لا يزال بالشك اليقين لا يزول بالشك Oh, you zalu bishak. That certainty cannot be removed with doubt. I didn't give him a delil. I just gave him a qa'id of fiqiyah. Can he just say barakallahu fiqh and go to the masjid and pray? Can he do that? It's a question that scholars ask. The opinions of the scholars is two. There's two views. There's two views. The first view of scholars, they say, no, it's not permissible. And al-qawaid al-fiqiyah are not a proof. Another group of scholars, they came and they said, no, it is a proof. What do you mean it's not a proof? And both parties are wrong because they unrestrictedly gave a verdict. What is correct is fihi tafsil. It's neither of the two, but it's both of them. Meaning, it depends. It depends. If the qawaid al fiqiyah, the qawaid al fiqiyah, by the way, it's taken from three places. The first one is Adilla to Sharia. It's taken from the Sharia Bilafdiha, word for word. Where is it taken from? Word for word. This is the Qaida, but it's taken from the Prophet's mouth word for word, verbatim. There's nothing changed. It's word for word. Are we all together? Example for that is Al Kharaju Bid Daman. Al Kharaju Bid Daman. What does this principle mean? A brother says, Barakallah Fiqh Shaykh, I, um, I took a car from a brother. I took a car from a brother. I bought it from him. When I went, I drove the car. I drove a car for, the day, for a day. I drove the car for a, for a day. Okay. I now f saw inside the car a fault. It's faulted. The car is faulted. I now want to bring it back to the brother. 
I want to what? I want to bring it back to the brother. Okay. Do I have to pay for that time I drove? Do I have to pay rent money? Or do I just bring back the car and he gives me back my money? We will say, you don't have to pay anything. Just give me back the car and he will give you the money. Hey, why? Al kharaju bil daman. What does that mean? Whilst you were driving the car, who's reliable? Who's who's the liability of a car crash? Anything happening was on who? You. Anything happened at that time when it was not with this brother, the liability would be on who? If somebody was in your car and they died, and it wasn't your, you didn't do it deliberately. Of course, you did it by accident. Who would have to pay the blood money? You, the driver, right? You're liable. Does that make sense? So it, because of that, you have the rights to benefit from it. Had the rights to benefit from it. You don't have to pay him anything. Does that make sense? This qa'idah is taken from a hadith, directly, word for word. The Prophet said it like that, al-kharaj with daman That qa'idah is a, of course it's taken. Of course it's a proof. The Prophet said it. Even though it's better to say the Prophet said it's better to say that Nabi Muhammad said al kharaj bil daman But some scholars won't. Some scholars will say the qa'idah al fiqhiyah is al kharaj bil daman That is, that is a qa'idah that is taken from the Prophet's statement word for word. The second type is a qa'idah that is taken from the evidence, but by meaning. It's taken from Adila to Sharia. It is taken from the evidence. It is taken from the Prophet statement, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not word for word, but the meaning was taken from the Prophet. The person, the scholars, they reworded it, but the meaning goes back to maybe one hadith or it goes to several hadiths. An example for that is Al Umuru bi Maqasidiha. Al Umuru bi Maqasidiha means Matters are based upon what is intended behind, behind, behind after it, I'm behind it. And the matters are based upon what is intended from it. Does that make sense? That it goes in the Mal bin Niyat and you know and many other hadiths that talk about intention. I'll give you an example. Um, a brother said, for example, which is one very common issue that the fuqaha talk about. A man marries a woman. His intention to marry this woman is to divorce her. That's his intention. Are we all together, brothers? This man is marrying this woman with the maqsad, the objective in his head and his mind is what? To divorce her. It's called a niyi an nikah biniyat al talaq. Marrying a woman with the intent of divorcing her. And Imam Shafi'i said it's permissible. The overwhelming majority of the scholars, they said it's permissible. No, it's not. It's not muta'ah that they both agreed upon it. If they both agree upon it because it becomes muta'ah. No, it's not. It's just the man has this in his head. He's not telling the girl. And he's not telling the girl's family. He's got it in his head. He's keeping it to himself. The overwhelming majority of the scholars, they said it's permissible. No, it's not permissible. First of all, it's khiyana, it's deception. And the Prophet came to the market, alayhi salatu salam, he put his finger inside a man's food and he saw it was wet and he took it out and he looked at it and he said, why is the wet part at the bottom? Why are you concealing it? Why do you bring it to the top so everyone can see it? Why don't you bring it to the top so everyone can see it? And then the Prophet said, Man ghashana falaysa minna. Anyone who deceives us is not from amongst us. Food that's wet, that's at the bottom, that you deceive the people with, it's less than a woman's honor, taking a, saying to a father, I'm taking your daughter, I'll take care of her. Yes, look after her in good. And you go and you have in your head to divorce her. Are we all together? That's the greatest form of deception. It's the greatest form of deception. But they say it's permissible because it meets all the criteria of marriage. The two witnesses are there. The father gave the girl out. They were both wanting to get married to each other. They said the shurut has been met. The arkan is there. This is, this is outside matter. But that's incorrect. The reason is al umuru bi maqasidiha. It falls under this qaida. Are we all together? And we'll discuss that inshallah ta'ala when we come to one of the five legal maxims. 
The first one, we'll speak about that in more details inshallah ta'ala And we're all together So we will say that this marriage of this girl is affected already Why is it affected? Your intention is evil As they say uh, That um, What's the qa'id they say? Al-qusud Mu'athiratun fil uqud That the intents can affect the transaction It affects it and it's haram, it's impermissible. In this case, uh, the only thing that was Oh, he could tell somebody else, it still doesn't make it haram. He could tell somebody else, it doesn't make it haram. Based on the jumhur, yeah. Or he, maybe he shared it with somebody else. He told somebody else about it and said to somebody, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get married. I'm a student of knowledge, for example. I'm in this country for one year or two, three years. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to leave. I'm moving. I'm, I'm, I'm a moving guy. I, I'm seeking knowledge. I'm a part of it. And it's common. It happens. So I'm going to marry and I'm going to divorce. But I won't tell the girl and I won't tell the family. That's deception. And it goes under this hadith, Al-Umuru bi maqasidiha. That brother should stop him from it. In other words, he should, he should stop her, him from getting married. Or he should stop the... And to inform the family and say, look, this is not right. Does that make sense? But if he doesn't tell anyone, he keeps it to himself, then of course the family won't know. Nobody knows. So they can't do anything about it. But is it permissible what he did? Is that marriage correct? No, it's not correct. It's haram what he did. Because he goes against the hadith. He goes against that hadith, which is al-umur bi maqasidiha. Does everyone understand so far how many types of qawaid uh, al-fiqih that we mentioned? There's a third type now. This third type of al-qawaid al-fiqih is not taken from the Prophet statement. Not the wording nor the meaning. It's actually taken. It's actually taken from. It's al-qa'idah al It's taken from istiqra al furu'. Istiqra al furu'. Meaning. It came from the statements of the scholars. It's based upon qiyas, in other words. It's not based upon adilla shar'iyah. It's not based on dalil. This qa'idah is actually extracted from what? It's actually extracted from ijtihad, independent reasoning. Does that make sense? I'll give you an example. A brother went and he bought a house. When he bought a house, the brother who sold him the house, he said, Akhi, I sold you the house, but I didn't sell you that palm tree. And the palm tree is inside the walls of the house. But it's at the front gate, next to the front gate. It's not inside, but it's... You know how we have a, you have a main wall, and then the house is inside it? The front gate, the tree is inside. Here, he goes, brother, give me the tree. They go to the sheikh and the qadi, the judge, and they sit with the qadi and the judge and they speak to him and they say, Sheikh, this is the situation that we're in. Okay? The sheikh cannot give a qa'idah which from the Quran or the Sunnah. Because this issue, he says, okay, when you sell a house, do you guys consider whatever is within those walls, do you consider it to be part of the house? Your custom. You consider that to be the house? If he says, yeah, yeah, we do. Anything within those walls are considered to be part of the house. He knows that it is and I know it is. And the people of the land know it. If he says, yeah, it is part of the house. Then we say, when you said, I sold the house to you, the tree was part of that, based on the qa'idah, which is at tabi'u tabi'. At tabi'u tabi'. That since it follows it in its naming, because the word, House is what you said And they both share that together And they follow each other in that Then they follow each other in ruling At-tabi'u tabi' They follow each other in name The tree was part of the house They had the same thing together So they have the same ruling Which is that the house was sold So was the tree So was the So was the tree But that's based upon That's based upon what? That's not based upon Evidence from the Quran or the Sunnah it's actually based upon it's based upon al qaidah al istiqra'iyah it's based upon istiqra' al furu' that can be rejected 
that is not necessarily always a proof. Does that make sense? That's the type that is in the scholars are entitled to differ upon. But the, the, the first two that I mentioned, they are what? They are a proof from the Quran and the Sunnah you would have to take. That's for what we intended to do for today, inshallah ta'ala, on al qawaid al fiqhiyah Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayhi.